Hi everyone and welcome to my kitchen! <laughs> Today I'm going to be doing some baking which is probably a very bad idea. I'm not the world's best chef <laughs> hence why I'm wearing an apron because I usually get really messy to be honest but today I thought I'd make some rabbit treats and I'm going to be making them with a little hole in so you can actually hang them on the Christmas tree as well. So we're going to see how this goes. So today I'm going to be using a big bowl to mix everything up in. A pestle and mortar which I think I'm going to need to grind up some of the ingredients. I might use a rolling pin, not entirely sure yet. <laughs> some kitchen scales to weigh out the ingredients. Some dandelion and green oak forage I might put in as well because it's some of the pet's absolute favourites. Also a carrot, a banana, you could use really any fruit or vegetable I guess. Um, I'm not entirely sure because I haven't made them before but that's what I'm going to be using. Um, also some cookie cutters, I've got some little Christmassy ones here and some hearts and also I've got this little bunny which is absolutely adorable. So this one came in a set which I, which was in the sale from Dunelm I believe. Ooh, focus. So I'm also going to be using some natural string. Now this isn't any natural, <laughs> this isn't natural string but we're going to pretend it is for the sake of this video because I cannot find mine anywhere and then I'm going to be using some oats and some bunny pellets as well. This is the um, Burgess overweight rabbit pellets. I use the overweight ones because um, it's lower in fat and that's basically it. So that's what I'm going to be using anyway, hopefully in theory. Turn off, turn off. Oh my god, turn off. This is not the time to break. Stay off. Why won't you work? Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What? No. These scales hate me. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is find some scales that aren't broken. These are my boyfriend's, he's a chef and I'm going to steal his scales. Mine are ruined. Don't tell him. <laughs> okay. Okay, so first you want to zero your scales. Okay, so I've got 50 grams of oats and 50 grams of pellets. I'm guessing that will be enough. I don't know. Who knows? Okay, so I'm just going to grind them up in here to make them smaller. Ugh. Oh my god, this is hard work. <laughs> so you could probably put them in blender or something but I don't think I've got a blender so I'm just gonna crush them that took absolutely ages but I've now ground up the oats and the um, rabbit pellets all together so I did do 50 grams of each and I'm glad I didn't do any more because it took absolutely forever. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is chopping up my banana and my carrots and blending them together. I'm going to leave that to the side for a second. And obviously if you're young or you're not confident using a knife then please ask an adult to help you. Um, I think I need an adult to help me because I just did this just getting the knife off the knife rack. So... Um, <laughs> knives are sharp obviously and that there is a burn from the day before yesterday when I cooked tea so I think I really need like baby cutlery to be honest <laughs> so please be very careful Oh my god, I'm so messy. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so now I'm going to somehow mash all of this stuff up together. Um, it would probably be easier if you had a blender, to be fair. I don't think I do, so... Um, hmm. So apparently I do have a little blender thing, which I found in the cupboard. So I'm going to give this a go and blend it all up. I'm guessing if you don't have a blender, you could kind of mash it up. If you cut up the carrot really, really finely, you could probably like mush it all up together. I'm guessing. I don't think it's got to be perfect. I don't know. Haven't done this before, but we're going to give this a go. If I can work out how this works. Why? Why are there so many lids? Okay, I've got it. I've got it. And the control. Whoa! <laughs> I reckon that's blended enough. You might want to use a spatula to scrape down the sides, maybe. So now you've got like a carrot and banana glue. If yours is a bit dry, then you can always add a little bit of water to help it like bind together. But you don't really want it too runny because then you can't like roll it out. Like I think mine's probably a bit wet really, so I'm not gonna be able to roll it out very well. So I might need to add some more dry ingredients. I completely forgot that I was going to add some porridge so I'll put that in now and hopefully that will help to dry it up as well because it is a little bit sticky. That doesn't work, let's not do that. Let's just rip it up into pieces. That doesn't really work either. I'm just going to put it in. It's really sticky and horrible. You might want to add less wet ingredients when you do it. This is really horrible and smudgy. So I've cleaned down my side and I'm just going to roll it out on my side here. Let's see if there's any leftover oats that I can use to like stop it sticking. Like you would flour, maybe. It might work. Who knows? Ew. So you want it to be like a dough for like cookies or whatever. This is so horrible. Okay, so before you do this, you might want to preheat your oven. So I think I'm going to cook them at about, I don't know, 150 degrees Celsius maybe. Uh, because I don't really want to cook them, I just want to dry them out. Because they need to be really dry sort of biscuits, because if I want to store them... If they've got any moisture in, then they'll just go mouldy. So you want to dry them right out, really. You don't want to, like, cook them. So, yeah, I think, like, 150. You probably want to do, like, a low heat for a long time rather than cooking them at a high temperature. Ew. So I'm going to preheat my oven. I'm also going to put some greaseproof paper on a baking tray because you really don't want this sticking to your kitchen stuff, especially if it's your parents because they might kill you. <laughs> it's really weird doing a how-to video on something that you don't know how to do, but <laughs> it's under control, pretty much. Okay, so I'm trying to cut it out and I'm just gonna wiggle it a bit as well to hopefully like free it up from being so stuck to the, <laughs> to the table. Oh dear. Ugh, I might need like a fish slicey thing to go underneath. <laughs> 
Uh, I think I'm going to use this to try and like <laughs> unstick it as well. Oh my god, this is not going so well. Okay, so <laughs> kind of made one. That is kind of a heart right there, almost. And I'm just going to poke like a hole in it. Like quite a big hole. So then hopefully, in theory, when it's dried, I can thread a bit of sort of natural string through and then hang it on the Christmas tree for the bunnies. So that is my theory. <laughs> so here are my finished thingies about to go in the oven. They got progressively worse because like as I went on, the, the stickier the mixture got. I think to be honest, it'd be better if you made it drier because it just got really sticky by the end. So I only cut out a few hearts and trees. There's one bunny and then these ones I just made into like cookie shapes because I a little bit gave up because it just got so sticky. And I think, to be honest, it would be better without the forage because it just makes it really hard to cut out and they're all kind of <laughs> hairy. But the pets will like it anyway. Another thing is you want them all to be pretty much the same sort of thickness and size really if you can because then they'll dry at a similar sort of rate. If you made like lots of really small ones and lots of big ones, the small ones would dry first. So that's what they look like anyway. And I'm gonna pop them into the oven and we'll see what they come out like. <laughs> Okay, so they are nearly done. I flipped them over because they were taking quite a while to dry on the bottom. So I just flipped them over and now I'm just gonna turn the oven off and leave them in there just so the heat can carry on um, drying them out. So that's them done for the moment. I thought I'd just show you as well my little gingerbread house that I've been working on today. I've had the day off work, so I've just had a day of baking basically and not being hugely productive. But I thought you'd want to see, <laughs> or I just want to show you, because I'm quite proud of it. I've never made a gingerbread house before. Um, I made it all from scratch. I normally do like gingerbread cookies, and it hasn't worked quite so well this time, but, so it's probably not gonna taste that great, but it's mainly for decoration anyway, so I'm not that bothered. Um, so I kind of made a template myself, and just cut them out. <laughs> and it's got a little stained glass window. I just sort of made a square for the side and then cut a little square out and put a boiled sweet in the middle. And then in the oven, it kind of um, just spread out and made like a little stained glass window. And there's one on the back there as well, which I thought was really cool. Um, as you can see, <laughs> it's kind of, <laughs> it wasn't flat on the baking tray. So it kind of goes, the roof is a bit funny at the back. But it's hidden at the back, so I'm going to decorate that now. I've just started on the roof, and then I'm going to put some um, icing down it, like snow, and then some sprinkles, and I'm going to make it really cool. But I thought I'd show you that while we're at it. Okay, so I've brought them out of the oven, and the tray is completely cooled. And I found some more natural string, which I'm going to use to thread them on, if I can find the end. So if you really wanted to, you could like get some natural string and then dye it using sort of um, vegetable dyes or what have you, anything that's safe, um, as long as you make sure it's safe for your animals before you give it to them. Um, anything that you want to put in, just double check, it's always worth checking just to be on the safe side rather than feeding them something they can't have and something awful happening. Um, so yeah, they're completely dry, uh, just so... I can now store them in a jar, the ones that I don't use, as long as you store it in an airtight container, they should last for a little while. So you can just turn it around so the knot is at the back so you don't see it. And there you go, and now that's ready to hang up somewhere where your bunnies have access to. If you are going to hang it on the tree, I really recommend only letting them near the tree when they're supervised just in case they sort of decided to eat the tree or any other decorations. Uh, my tree's set out so all of the bottom decorations are wooden and things that wouldn't hurt if they did eat it, just in case they did um, get access to it and try decide to have a nibble. Because I know you, you can get chocolate decorations, and I've got some on my tree, but I make sure that I put them very high up 
just in case because um, obviously bunnies can't have chocolate along with a lot of other animals. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed this sort of tutorial thing. And um, yeah, I hope your rabbits enjoy it. Of course you could just change the pellets and use it for guinea pigs. Make sure you don't feed guinea pig rabbit pellets though. But you could just swap out the rabbit pellets for guinea pig ones and then you could do the same thing for your guinea pigs. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is focus the camera. Give me a point, Becky. So I'm going to wash my hands and then do that now. <laughs>